uh, your loss. <laughs> More okay. for me. Thank you so much. Anything else? That's all I have. Anything else under uh, new business? Okay. Any? Go ahead. Questions or? Well, actually, I've been sitting here stewing on the testimony of Mr. Schaff and made some notes. Um, first, thank you for taking an interest in, in countywide issues. Um, he touched on something that really hit me and reminded me that I've said many times that I will listen to the people and do all I can to make sure that their voice is heard. And in various conversations around town, including one as recent as today, I'm hearing a lot of opposition about the subject of the library. Things I've been hearing is it's the wrong plan at the wrong time. It's insane to build so small. We should be building for 50 years, not 10 to 15. There's parking questions. There's a, a variety of issues with this project that they have, I don't feel like are being answered and addressed. Mostly, the fact that we can't operate it financially is what I see coming down the road. I have a feeling that the cops versus books conversation is going to come sooner rather than later, given the PERS increases on our budget. I don't see how we're going to be able to give the library the money like we did last year, and we're going to see service cuts in the future is what I'm seeing. This subject has been interesting to me then, that this is a project that's supposed to bring the community together, and yet it seems to be dividing it. Council vote was split. So the community seems to be split. There's many issues that have arose since the vote. And I think that there's two reasons why you're handed an obstacle. One might be because you are being tested in your resilience, but often I find that you're handed obstacles to maybe re-examine the path you're on. I'm speaking these things instead of several folks that I talk to because people are fed up. I'm finding that there's two camps of people, and this is to the Mr. Shop's point of that relationship with government. We brought a, they brought a series of issues at First Avenue. They felt that they were ignored. They were still having people out there that are mad about the police department being built, the way it was built against what they see as their wishes, because there was a vote on that. The quote I had was, the city's going to do what they want to anyway. So they feel like, why should they bother to come and say what they have to say, because they're not being listened to is what they're feeling. I was reminded last week that what's right isn't always popular and what's popular isn't always right. And I feel that there's never a wrong time to do what's right. So I just want it said that I believe that the right thing to do is to table the project and refer it to the voters. Are you making that as a motion? Or? I don't know. Can we move that? Can that be a motion without it being noticed, Sue? You can move to do anything you want. Um, it doesn't require a public notice. The public notice is that the meeting is being held tonight. That I the agenda is generally set by the chairman. Let me finish. Okay, sorry. Um, and then if you want to add items to the agenda, then that's up to you to, to consult the chairman. So I don't run the meeting. I just give oh, you I was just wondering if there's a legality there I'm noticing or not. Okay. Well, there might be questions that need to be answered as to whether you can carry out such a motion. And that would be research you would direct staff to undertake. But yes, by all means, you may make any motion you know you wish. That I move, we, pro we table the project and make a referral to the voters. If I could ask a question, um, it would seem like a good deal of research should be done because I believe the bond issue has already been completed. And I think, uh, you know, understanding the impacts of such a motion inside and out um, in my opinion would be the best course of action to research the issue I don't think that a motion at this time in my view um, is timely given all the unknowns of how far down the tracks the project already is that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. if I can ask Greg, Greg, I, I posed this question to you in December, and and that once once we've sold the bonds, 
if we don't proceed with what they are used for and uh, we have to refund them, then we have to pay the full amount of interest. So basically we've spent all the money that we would have spent on the interest on building the library. We'd be spending millions of dollars and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have anything. That is my understanding. This is not a loan. It is an investment. And so these investors have invested in, um, whatever it is, $14 million worth of bonds to yeah. do three projects. And no matter what, that money gets paid back, whether it's, um, you know, 20 years, five years. In fact, we have a recall thing, what do they call it? A, uh, you can call the bonds in 10 years, and you can't do it before 10 years right. because of the interest paid on those bonds and then investors' um, potential for losing money. So that's what I've been told, that you can't. And the spending of those of that money has to be in a timely fashion. In fact, there is, you have to spend so much in a certain amount of time, and, and the entire project or the entire expense has to be done within a three-year period from the sale of the bonds. Bonds were sold uh, December 28th, so we're, what, two, three months into it, something like that. But that's my understanding that that has to be done in a certain time. The other thing is we've spent quite a bit of money. I mean, that may be no reason to continue, but we've spent quite a bit of money to get from where we started to this point. So um, I'm not saying we would lose that money, but... Um, well, but my question right. would be if you stop the, and I assume you're talking about the library process. Right, not this wouldn't, I, I, the library, well, the whole library project, meaning right. I mean, there's not a, it's a three phase project. But it's the library. The office and the, right, I'm mm -hmm. not talking about Sequoia Parkway Bridge, no. Okay, but that's part of the same bond. Mm -hmm. You can't stop one without stopping the other. That's, that's how I understand it, Carol. Yeah. And you don't. They're tied together. Now, you didn't vote for that, and I understand that, but, but the two of them were combined together. So we put both of them in jeopardy. We put the financial reputation of this city in jeopardy. And, um, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that you've never wanted this, this library project to proceed, but we're down, we're down the track. We're, we're way beyond that now. And if, if you want to stop other projects, if you, I told you if you want to refund the uh, Urban Renewal District and, and, and uh, end it sooner, I'd, I'd support that. But uh, we've taken the votes. Um, we've made the commitments. We've started raising funds. Um, you know, we'd be, we'd be screwing our buddies who are out there raising funds. Um, based upon their belief and trust in us. People have written checks. And um, I don't think you become a great city by changing course. We've, we've set on a course and, and we need to commit it. <clears throat> and we're not a democracy. There's a lot of confusion over that. We're a republic. We elect people to make decisions. Can, can the public do a better job of electing people? I think the election of me as a city councilor is an excellent <laughs> example of that. But, but until you elect new people to make new decisions, I, I think you have to respect the decisions that have been made. Referral to the public is, is, is a coward's way out. It's, it's not why we were elected. We were elected to make the decisions not pass along hard decisions to voters. You know, this is a complicated thing. You know, there's less than 200 people in, in Oregon that understand urban renewal laws. We have to pay a high-priced lawyer to come in and give us advice every time we do something. These type of complexities are not something that are suited for the marketplace. With all due respect, Mr. Parker, Yes, we are a republic and not a democracy, but this issue is something that the council was evenly split on, the community is split on. I think that that tells us something, that maybe this issue, it is complex, but our citizens are smart, and 
We are quick to call this a democracy until those think that maybe they're not in the majority. Then we go, oh, wait, we're a republic. We need to take each issue. And this one is very divided. If, if there was a decisive vote by the council, absolutely in a majority, there was no question that this was a good project and there were people losing sleep over it, I'd say go ahead. But it was an evenly split vote. The public, in my walkings around, it's a good two or three to one on the project. I say let the people vote and let us know. If they say yes, build a library, so be it. That's not the question. The question is whether we proceed with a legal obligation on urban renewal bonds. Then we that need to investigate the what that, the obligation is. That is the issue, and that is a much more complex issue. And I don't even think you can answer some of the questions on the timing and when, when those bonds have to be spent. I certainly can't, and I wouldn't want to put this city in jeopardy. I wouldn't either, us saying that we, we all have those questions. Let's get the answers. So do, do we need to do homework? I'll you do it again. The <laughs> there's no second. second. Yeah, I was okay. going to say there's, yeah, there's no um, second on it yet. Um, I can do it again. I have somebody come and talk to you, but that's what I've been told, and um, that it has to be done in a certain time. What would the delay look like? I mean, I think Councilor Parker makes uh, Chairman Parker, uh, Commissioner Parker. Commissioner Thank Parker. Thank you. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you know, we've got people out <laughs> looking for funds right now, and I think our credibility goes in the toilet. If we, you know, we've got people that have given a lot of money to this project already, foundations, et cetera. Um, and I, I've got to say, uh, it wasn't an even vote. It was four to three. I, that's a majority. You are a <laughs> I mean, uh, it wasn't three to three or we wouldn't be here. Uh, I forget that the mayor is a voting member of this panel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But... But, you know, we've spent a lot of money coming to this point, and I'd be glad to at least do some homework and get I that to you again. I do want to clarify that it's not that I don't think we need some improvements to the library. I just simply think this is the wrong plan at the wrong time. Yeah. And we need to, we still could use those funds given by the foundations for a library. I just think that, like First Avenue, we are heading down this track too fast. We need to slow down, look at it, and do what's right. Yeah, uh, I, I just got to say, I think personally think we're going down the right path. Um, I understand that there's a disagreement amongst the council, <laughs> but I have been given my marching orders. I listened to a majority vote, and so I've been going as fast as I can to get this thing done based on a 4-3 vote back in August. And so um, that's where I'm headed. Okay, well, Until <clears throat> I'm told differently by this group. Okay, Commissioner Hensley has made a motion to table the library project and refer to the voters. Is there a second? So the motion dies for lack of a second. Next step. We go to executive session, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just... I, I, would, I would ask that for the next agency meeting that we get the information that okay uh, I, would would you like um, I I think she would be glad to come and that's Katie Schwab who mm -hmm. works for Wedbush and uh, I think she's more uh, she's the expert in the field is, is is Katie only or should we have Jeanette uh, Jeanette wouldn't be a bad I think I think that'd be a good also Jeanette's the for those that don't know Jeanette's the attorney for the urban renewal uh, agency so uh, uh, Katie can certainly tell you what the ramifications are in terms of the bond issue mm -hmm. and Jeanette may be able to talk about some of the legal issues as well. okay all right so we'll put that on the agenda the next agenda okay to answer the questions that have been brought up about the bonds and yeah. legality and whether they can be turned okay. and yeah. turned around and such all right any more on that subject? All right, we are now at the point where we 
I'm assuming we're going to go into executive session in a moment once a, a motion is made. But at this point, we often allow further uh, input on non-agenda items from members of the public. And I noticed that we have our county commission chair in attendance tonight. And if you would like to address us, this would be an appropriate opportunity. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. John Ludlow, Wilsonville, Clackamas County Chair. Well, I, uh, you know, I have a history on urban renewal, and, uh, and uh, that includes, of course, uh, and especially in Wilsonville. And we all know that in Portland, 25 cents out of every tax dollar goes to urban renewal. There's a big misuse of funds there, and all their primary functions are suffering because of that. Schools, police, library, fire. And I'm not here to talk down the library at all. I mean, I believe in libraries. I believe you probably need a library. But what I believe more strongly is that the public needs to vote. I appreciate the motion by uh, Commissioner Hensley. Um, and, and you know, uh, it probably begs a broader discussion. Um, when I helped send solar power packing from Wilsonville, I received a heap of criticism for that. But factually, I saved Wilsonville $11 million, and actually the commission, the county commission, promised $2 million of that should solar power fail. They're failing right now, folks, drastically. Uh, they will be gone here pretty soon, and the great experiment of hundreds of million dollars of public taxpayers' money will be gone. That doesn't relate necessarily to what you're talking about tonight, and uh, I appreciate the judicious way that you're going to investigate the costs of something, abandoning something like this, but I, I think I again want to speak to the most important thing to me, and that is the public weigh-in. Because you were all elected, and I agree with that, and it is a, a representative form of government, but the old adage goes something like this, you got to dance with who brung you. Now the people brung you, and as was stated, I believe very strongly that the public understands urban renewal. I believe very strongly they can, they can understand tax increment financing. And believe me, I've been studying it since the 90s, and I understand it perfectly. It is the scraping of vital funds from vital programs to use like you want, like a credit card. Uh, it is no coincidence that Clackamas County voted strongly to make it a vote from now on. It's not a coincidence that Oregon City said the same thing, and Gladstone, and it will spread. So you can do what you want to do now, and, and that's your right to do that, based on a 4-3 vote last year. But I think you should pay close attention to those who would like to weigh in on this. And I don't know the costs, and I don't pretend to know the costs of, of what it would cost if you just said, you know, no thanks to the bonds, or how far they are along. I, I'm not privy to that, and I'm sure you'll fully investigate that. But uh, again, dancing with who brung you means that the voters are smart enough, smart enough, to discern what they want if the information was provided them. And I would uh, hardly recommend uh, in the future that you do exactly that when spending millions of dollars of taxpayers' money. Again, this is not anti-library. I've been very supportive of the library in Wilsonville, and the first one we ever created was a little small one that Mayor Bill Lowry at the time uh, pushed very hard, and I built the wheelchair ramp because I was a carpenter into that library. So I've been supportive for decades of libraries. But I'm much more supportive of taxpayers' rights. And the taxpayers' rights mean that they should be able to vote when you're spending their money. Regardless of what's been said about urban renewal being a valuable tool, it is also a way to take money away from taxing entities. A perfect example is Clackamas Town Center. I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars taken from that district over a period of 30 years. And uh, no ownership by the voters at all in that decision. And that's one of the reasons that abuse was what brought the county to decide by a large plurality, 70 percent, said from now on, we want to vote on these things. I think you know, if hopefully, you know, the esteemed council would take that into consideration in the future that the public wants to vote on these things. And, you know, it can be pushed ahead. And if, you, if it's a huge loss, I certainly understand the need to carry forward. But if it's not a huge loss, you should probably just put it to the voters and see what they think. You can educate them, tell them the choices, and have them make the choice. And so I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for, for listening to me. Thank, Thank you, Chairman Okay. Real short response, please. Real short. Uh, and likewise, I, I'm not opposed to whatever project the city might come up with. I'm only concerned about the funding mechanism. But moreover, uh, since listening to the comments here, uh, and I've heard 
much of the same approach that uh, something say you're too late and uh, then there's the speculation about what the impacts would be and this is where uh, a real rub is because there's no reason to have speculation about what the impacts would be having already sold the bonds because there are legal minds and legal opinions that would define absolutely and specifically what the options are and I think uh, I've had some conversation with some experts and I, I think you'll find uh, more than one option that will be attractive when you finally get the objective and reliable legal counsel uh, uh, advice on that and so uh, I, I would uh, uh, compel you to do so and, and uh, I think maybe that should have been done already but uh, I'm glad to hear that it's going to be done now and I hope that you don't narrow the scope of inquiry uh, to get an answer that is suitable to continuing forward and to really get a full spectrum of your options because I think you may find out at the end of the day if, if she makes another motion down the road because you've got some good indications you could have good op options you will not only get your library it'll be a much better project for a lot less money and what's wrong with that you can do something that makes everybody happy what a concept and that's where the, the options will, I think they'll provide for you. So uh, please uh, talk about that in my I'm pursuit sorry, of those. I needed to put down what city you were from? Twalton. Twalton. And by the way, uh, awesome. I might add they, in 2010, they concluded their 35 year urban renewal district under a contentious discussion. They wanted to expand it for another 30 years, $120 million. And today, their budget is mighty fine looking in the city of Tualatin. They have solidified and stabilized their budget, and they've had the luxury and comfort of having a, a regrouping of the citizens of Tualatin, and they are, are really united, and it's working well. So they are very glad, and they, there is some opposition to shutting that down and not expanding that, and they are glad they did. And I can tell you, I know a lot of people in my town, and it turned out very well. So look forward to a good project, but this is not the way to do it. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address? Craig Lowering, property owner in the industrial park. Um, there's been a lot of talk tonight on urban renewal, and I'm hearing a lot of negativity on urban renewal, and I guess rightfully so. But I, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, urban renewal, I, I think I kind of blame the state for not explaining it to taxpayers many years ago, because I think a lot of different decisions would have been made since. Urban renewal is a great plan. It's probably the best thing the state ever created. But it has been abused. Uh, bad decisions by planning commissions and councils have been happening all over the state. Uh, go to the interstate uh, light rail. Voters voted it down, voted it down, no one understood how it got in there. Urban renewal put it in. So I think, what does urban renewal do though? The whole point is to take care of the blighted areas, revitalize your city, bring in jobs, it's an investment into your community. And to say that it's taken away from something is dead wrong. It's taken away if you abuse it. It is not taking it away. It's investing in your community. And there's nobody that understands urban renewal better than me, I can assure you. I'll challenge anybody. This is an investment in your community. But you've got to make good decisions. Thanks, Craig. Any other comments? Rich. Mr. Parker, Commissioner. Um, I appreciate the comments. Commissioner, thanks for coming out here. And, um, and I know you didn't call my baby ugly, but <laughs> let me say that the Clackamas Urban Renewal District is different than the Canby. Um, Craig was on the, was at the start of that. Buzz was there. Um, one of our former counselors was and um, the Canby Pioneer Industrial Park is is not the Clackamas Town Center I don't know about Tualatin but but give us the benefit of the doubt that that maybe we might have done it better um, I think we have I think we've made some really good choices with what we've done and um, my goal is to try and retire this district early and not extend it on to 30 years. So, you know, give us the benefit of the doubt that maybe somebody in the state is doing it right. And, you know, you throw around PDC and Clackamas Town Center and things like that. Um, 
my puppy's different. It's not, not the same as those other dogs that you're talking out there. So just a, just a proud dog owner to let you know that I, I think we're doing it better. Any other comments? I'd just like to say, uh, I'd like to commend uh, Councillor Hensley for her conviction. I just didn't feel as though we had enough information um, in order to move on with her motion. I agree Thank with you. that also, support her. Other comments? All right. Uh, Chairman Ayers, I motion that we go into executive session pursuant to ORS 192 dot six six zero parenthesis two parenthesis e real property second second motion by uh, commissioner hudson second by commissioner dale to go into executive session under ors 192.6602 e real property those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed same sign Okay, I need to uh, read this before we uh, adjourn the meeting. Um, <clears throat> recess. Recess. Thank you very much. You'll get me trained someday, <laughs> about the time I'm gone. Uh, the Urban Renewal Agency will now recess this meeting to, to meet in executive session for the purpose of discussing real property. The executive session is held pursuant to ORS 192.6602E, which allows the agency to meet in executive session to discuss these topics, those topics. Only representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. The agency will adjourn to the City Hall Conference Room to hold its executive session. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision made may be made in executive session. At the end of the session, we may reconvene the meeting in the City Hall Conference Room and conduct any further business that needs to be taken care of. And with that, we are recessed. <laughs> For Coleman, for Commissioner Coleman and Commissioner Ryder, who fairly new, you'll recess into the other room, and then you'll recess back out of executive into regular session, and then you'll adjourn. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we are recessed.